it's blind baked. What that means is that I took my basic dough, which is on my website, madhungry.com, you've seen me make it many times, and I take some dried beans and put it in parchment, and this is a very typical technique, and it just weights down the dough so I have a beautifully formed crust. And then it goes back in for five minutes to get golden, and that's all the baking that this pie is doing. So that's why we need to get our crust right, 400 degrees, Already did 20 minutes and now five more. And now I'm gonna get started with the filling. So, well, the basic thing about this is when I was a little kid, my favorite candy bar was the one with coconut covered in chocolate. So coconut is a theme throughout my life and coconut cream pie just makes me swoon. So I'm starting with a custard and I just put a half a cup of flour into my bowl, a half a cup of sugar, and this is about the main, main, main part of cooking we're doing for this. And an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And then just bring it over here. I have water. I'm making my own little double boiler. I remember my mom's double boiler. It was this contraption, and you don't need to keep that in your cabinet unless you already have one. Put it over your simmering water and just start to mix up a little bit here. And over here, I have two cups of milk, which I have warmed up to hot, but not super boiling. Now, what I'm doing here is a very basic custard. You're just adding your hot milk here to your flour, which is the thickener, and sugar and salt. Now, just today, I had a phone call from a friend who was making banana cream pie, and she said that she did not have thickened custard. And I talked to her about it, and she was doing this technique, and I know exactly what happened to her, and that is that she did not cook this long enough because the flour needs time to thicken up. If you learn how to make a basic custard like this, you can have banana cream pie, you can have coconut cream pie, you can have chocolate pie. So as this is beginning to thicken up after a couple minutes, I have three eggs. So what I wanna do here is I wanna save the whites because I'm gonna make a meringue with this pie. Back in those days, it seems like they didn't find a pie they didn't wanna put a meringue on. There was a meringue on everything. And if you think about it, it makes really good sense from a frugal standpoint because you're using these yolks here for your thickened custard and you're left with these whites, so why would you waste them and make this beautiful big meringue? Makes perfect sense to me. You can think of all those pictures, old time diner pictures, where there's beautiful big meringues just fluffing on the top of a pie. Okay, this is great. So we're gonna leave the whites for later. I'm gonna give this a nice whisk. Now we are tempering. If I put these yolks straight into what I got going on over here, I would just have scrambled eggs. So by tempering, what you do is you just take some of your mixture and slowly make these temperatures more equal. So I'm just gonna take a little tiny bit of this, not too, too much, and pour it in and whisk around. There we go. Get this back over here. And then as I whisk this in, it'll start to thicken. All right, that's beautiful. There we go. And then I'm just gonna kind of make sure that I get the bottom, everything going on in the bottom. And like I said, if you were making a pudding, if you were making, uh, oh my gosh, you could, if you were making a pastry cream, this is just a very, very typical technique. All right, so I have not forgotten about my pie crust, which I'm gonna go grab out of the oven. Oh yeah, nice and golden. This is just what you want. Nothing worse than a soggy, undercooked pie bottom, I always say. So this is a good way to make sure you get it cooked properly. All right, meanwhile, back at my custard, the color has changed and it has thickened up, and this is exactly what you want. You want it to really be resistant and to leave a ribbon behind. Now, just because we wanna make it extra silky and delicious, we're putting two tablespoons of butter in here, and it'll just gently melt in. In fact, I am going to move on to a spatula so I can make sure I'm getting everything from all the corners here. Yum. Custard is good. And then a teaspoon of vanilla. I'll just put it right in. And then, to the star of the show, I have some coconut here. It's unsweetened coconut. This custard is already sweet enough, so if you can find unsweetened coconut, that'd be nice. Total of about a cup. Maybe a little bit more, since I love it so much. I'll just fold it in, and I am turning this off now. Now, this may look still a little bit loose, 
but it is really going to set up beautifully. All we need to do is make sure that we give it time to chill. And I'm going to bring over my pie crust here so that I have an easy way to just pour it in. Now remember when you pick up your bowl, just be mindful of the fact that you have simmering water under there so that you don't burn yourself. And then drop here and get some of the water off the bottom so it doesn't make your crust soggy. And then right here, pour it in. And we are on our way. So I had three egg yolks in my custard and I've got my three egg whites here, which I'm going to whip to a meringue. So I'm starting with an eighth of a teaspoon of salt and an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. And that's gonna stabilize and really give them some structure. So we're gonna whip them up slowly. Onto high. And then I'm putting in a half a cup of sugar. And then you slowly add the sugar so it can dissolve as it's eating. You don't wanna put one big clump of sugar in there. All right, this is great. Beautiful, it's got structure. Just as though I was telling you to keep the, make sure you cook the custard long enough, make sure that you whip these egg whites long enough. Otherwise, they're not gonna be exactly where you want them to be. All right, so I'm gonna just grab a spatula here and get everything out. And here we go to finish this little beauty of a pie. And just dump it on. And then you could just use a spoon or you could even just use this spatula. But if you happen to have yourself at home an offset spatula, which is, by the way, one of those handy little things to keep when you're icing cakes or you're doing something like this. And it allows you to do all your swooping and whooping, which is what we're gonna do here. Oh, You can imagine how this kind of a pie kind of excited the young me. Now, at times when I didn't have a torch, I just put it in the oven. But it, it is ideal if you can uh, go into your hardware area of your house. What did you, you end with that? Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right, I am happy to see him. I cannot believe my brother Jim flies all the way in from Louisiana to surprise me. I came in because of all the fancy things you were cooking, I heard when we grew up from the rendezvous in the Menards Tavern. Here, you do it. Peek it? Yeah, peek it. Okay. You peek it. Perfect that we have somebody here who can operate the torch, because I was just about to say that I have never really operated a blow torch from the hardware area of the house. What's in your arm? This? What did you bring with you? I brought a special gift from you, something that <laughs> dates back to the cowboy and Indian days. This is what I made for my dad. I actually sewed this from his old blue jeans with his signature. Not bad for a young That's teenager. That's perfect. That's a perfect signature of dad's. You know I'm what, I impressed. want you to put it on. You sure? Yeah. You don't want to wreck your hair? No, here, I'll tie it. You start torching. Have you ever torched meringue before? Very lightly. Okay, okay. <laughs> go for it. Okay. Just press it. Press it, go. So now what we want to do is just get all those nice little flips and dips with a little bit of color on them. There you go.